It's official, home prices are falling and they're falling fast. In fact, according to a new report out from Black Knight, July and August saw the biggest two month price crash since the winter of 2008, which is when Lehman Brothers collapsed. So is this 2008 all over again? Are we witnessing a housing market crash as big as we saw during the Great Recession? Or is something even worse on the horizon? To answer these questions, we're going to compare 2023 to 2008 by looking at seven graphs reflecting the state of the market and the larger economy today and then. Because this moment isn't 2008 exactly, and by understanding the differences and similarities between now and then, we'll better understand where home prices are headed, and more importantly, how to take advantage of this market volatility, which I'll get into later in the video. I'm John Schwartz, a real estate investor and realtor in Los Angeles, California, and this channel is all about making sense of this wild housing market. So subscribe for more videos like this if you're considering buying a home anytime soon. Now let's dig in. Graph number one, the Case-Shiller Home Price Index, which best captures home price movement, but like all very good data, trails by a few months. So we only have Case-Shiller numbers through August 2022, but we can see that pricing peaked in June before falling off for the first time since the start of the pandemic. So we'll mark June 2022 as this cycle's pricing peak. The last pricing peak was in February 2007. We'll mark this too and use these two pricing peaks as our points of comparison on subsequent graphs. Now, it's worth noting that this graph alone should send shivers down your spine. From the start of the pandemic to the June 2022 peak, home prices grew by a staggering 41%. By contrast, over the same period of time leading up to the previous peak, home prices grew by 33% before crashing 26% over the next five years. And this time, according to affordability metrics, it's even worse. There are different ways to measure affordability. Median income versus median home price, percent of a median income required for the mortgage payment on a median priced home given prevailing mortgage rates, real wage growth versus real home price growth, etc. All of these metrics concur that today's home buyer is in worse shape than back in 2007. So in terms of pricing, this cycle looks like an even bigger bubble than the last. But it's the big difference between now and then that suggests why this crash could be even worse. Which brings us to graph number two, the year over year change of the consumer price index for all urban consumers, i.e. the US inflation rate. In June, 2022, the US inflation rate was at 8.99%. In February, 2007, at the last pricing peak, inflation was at just 2.42%. This is why right now is not 2008 all over again and might be something much worse. This is the big story right now. Inflation is the factor driving today's economy, housing market, and housing prices. We have to go all the way back to 1981, over 40 years ago, to see inflation as high as it is right now. And this incredibly high inflation is making life in America very expensive for your average working man and woman. So the Fed has decided it needs to do whatever it takes to bring inflation back down to the target rate of 2%. This means raising the federal funds rate, which it has done aggressively since the start of 2022. When the federal funds rate goes up, all forms of borrowing become more expensive. And this has two significant impacts for the housing market. Graph number three, the average rate on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, which has more than doubled in 2022 from under 3% to over 7%. But looking at how this moment compares to 2008 reveals a more nuanced story. The average mortgage rate when prices peaked in June was 5.81%. In February 2007, the average mortgage rates were in the low sixes. But here's what's more important. Then we had an environment of falling rates. Today, we should expect an environment of rising rates, or at the very least, rates to stick above 6% for some time. Why is this so meaningful? A high rate environment is a double-edged sword. Village criers like these guys only focus on the buy side of the housing market. Their argument is that high interest rates will deter buyers, tank the market, and cause prices to crash but they neglect to appreciate that the housing market is a two-sided marketplace where sellers have just as much agency, in fact, more than buyers. Redfin reported earlier this year that 51% of homeowners with mortgages have an interest rate below 4%, and 38% of homeowners don't have any mortgage at all. This is what you get after a decade of low rates and the refinance bonanza that occurred during the pandemic. For example, I refinanced at 2.49%. I'm not giving up that mortgage until I absolutely have to. So in this high rate environment, fewer buyers will be able to buy but fewer sellers will be interested in selling. When the same monthly payment affords you a lot less house, you're going to keep your current house. And if supply falls while demand falls, you're simply not going to get a price crash. A correction, especially in pandemic hotspots, yes, but limited supply is what prevents a crash. And if you're thinking this argument doesn't hold water, let's take a look at supply now versus supply then. Graph number four, existing home inventory, i.e. how many homes are actually for sale each month. In June, 2022, when pricing peaked, 
there were 1,250,000 homes on the market. Back in February 2007, at the last peak, there were 3,380,000 homes on the market. But that's not all we're seeing. Before the Great Recession, from 2005 to 2007, we saw a rapid increase in supply at the same time that prices were rapidly climbing. This is what a bubble looks like, because usually the relationship between supply and price is inverse. When supply goes up relative to demand, prices should go down, and vice versa. When supply goes down, prices should go up. And that's exactly what we see in the years preceding our June 2022 pricing peak. Since mid-2014, inventory has been steadily declining to what is currently a 40-year low. This is why seller behavior is so important right now. Yes, higher interest rates have forced the correction that we all saw coming, but in order for the housing market to crash, for home prices to crash, we need inventory to at least triple, then stay at that level for at least three years. That's what we saw during the last crash. And come to think of it, thanks to the Fed, there is a chance of seeing that again. You see, the Fed raises the federal funds rate not just to raise mortgage rates, but to slow down the whole economy. It becomes more expensive for businesses to borrow and expand, which means they start to contract, which means layoffs. And it's impossible to pay a mortgage if you don't have a paycheck, regardless of how low your interest rate is. So how big is the risk that a Fed-induced recession leads to massive layoffs and the floor opening up on home prices? Let's find out. Graph number five, jobs added or lost per month. Back in February 2007, the US economy was adding an average of 164,000 jobs per month. In June 2022, we were at 517,000. So hiring is running a lot stronger now than then but you can see that the pace of hiring is slowing down. And it should be given how aggressively the Fed has been raising the federal funds rate. But how many job losses would we need to see for home prices to crash? During the Great Recession, the US economy shed almost 8.8 .8 million jobs, and the unemployment rate hit 10%. Currently, the unemployment rate is 3.5%, with the Fed predicting 4.4% next year, and some economists calculating that the unemployment rate would have to hit 7% for inflation to come back down to the target rate. Looking at the size of the US workforce as of September 2022, we can calculate that hitting a 7% unemployment rate means shedding about 5.7 million jobs. So a lot, but only two thirds of the jobs we lost during the Great Recession. And during the Great Recession, we lost the bulk of those jobs in a two year span, from early 2008 to early 2010. Are we about to see that same rapid job loss this time around? Here's how we can answer that question. Graph number six, job openings per month. Back in February 2007, at the last pricing peak, we had 4.7 million job openings. In June, at the most recent price peak, we had 11 million job openings. So we're asking, how quickly can the US economy shed 5.7 million jobs when US businesses are currently trying to fill over 10 million job openings? That's the most recent job openings number as of this recording. It's going to take a while for US businesses to lay off 5 million workers when currently they're trying to hire double that number. Of course, that said, you can see how fast the fall off in job openings has been in the last few months. At the depths of the Great Recession, we saw job openings in the 2 million range. Is it out of the question that we're there again in a year or two? It's possible. And anybody who tells you it's not is lying. And anybody who tells you that that's definitely where we're headed is also lying. The truth is, nobody knows for sure where we'll be in a year or two but I've saved the best for last. Here's why I'm cautious, but not panicking, about where we're headed in the next year or two. Graph number seven is actually two graphs in one, and they come to us via Yardeni Research's September 2022 report, US Economic Indicators Homeowners Equity. We're gonna spend a second on these graphs because these three lines tell us a whole lot about the housing crash currently brewing. But first, let's make sure we're all clear on our terminology. When we talk about equity, we're talking about how much of a home the homeowner actually owns. For example, my home appraised last year for $2.3 million. My loan balance is currently $1.3 million. So my equity is the difference between the home's value and my loan balance, which is $1 million or 43%. So the top graph tracks two metrics. In blue, we have the total value of equity, that homeowners have in their homes. And in red, we have the total home mortgage balance. These metrics are nationwide totals and measured in trillions. In Q2 2022, in other words, in June 2022, when housing prices peaked this time around, total homeowner equity stood at $29 trillion, while the total mortgage balance was at $12.2 trillion. Now, to understand the significance of these numbers of where we are now, we have to look at where we were immediately preceding the last crash. So last time around, pricing peaked in February 2007, but you can see from this graph that equity peaked around January 2006. Over the one year period between these points, home prices rose one and a quarter percent, according to the Case Shiller Index, but homeowners collectively lost equity in their homes. We can see how dramatically in the lower graph, which shows total homeowner equity as a percentage of total real estate value. 
over a period in which all homes in America grew one and a quarter percent in value, homeowners collectively lost 5% of their equity in their homes. How? Well, new homeowners were coming into the market without down payments and existing homeowners were refinancing at amounts that exceeded the appraised value of their homes. I'm not describing every buyer and every homeowner during this period, but enough of them over leveraged so much that debt grew four times faster than equity. It's honestly difficult to overstate how loose and irresponsible lending was in 2006 and 2007. But the fact that debt grew so much faster than equity in this period of rising values should make the point. Of course, when the housing market is so over leveraged, as soon as pricing begins to correct, a doom cycle is triggered. New homeowners without any equity are immediately underwater, which leads to foreclosures. Foreclosures pull down the whole market, pulling more homeowners underwater, leading to more foreclosures, etc. By 2010, the US housing market was awash in foreclosures. For scope, Q3 2010 saw 10 times as many homes go into foreclosure as Q3 2022. But speaking of scope, there's something else remarkable in these graphs. From 2009 to 2012, the total mortgage balance in America was higher than the total value of home equity in America. This is the only time this has happened, the only time we've come close since at least 1960. Now, homeowner equity falling under 50% doesn't automatically trigger a kill switch. And don't be confused, it doesn't mean every homeowner in America is underwater. What it does mean is that homeowners were more leveraged than ever before or ever since, and that's a bad situation to be in when a massive recession hits and home prices start to fall. Okay, so now what about today? Since the start of the pandemic, homeowner equity has grown significantly faster than homeowner debt. While mortgage debt has grown by about $1.5 trillion, homeowner equity has grown by about $9 trillion. At the last pricing peak, homeowner equity was about 140% of homeowner debt. Today, homeowner equity is 238% of homeowner debt. At the last pricing peak, homeowner equity as a percentage of home values was at 58%. Today, it's at 70%, a level we haven't seen since the early 1980s. So what do we learn from these graphs comparing this moment to the last pricing peak? Firstly, today's home buyers in the aggregate bought into the market with a lot more equity. And homeowners who refinanced aren't over leveraging. Today's homeowners are in significantly better shape than in 2008. Secondly, and this is a nuanced point that most people don't get. When discussing the housing market and where it's headed, it's important to distinguish homeowners and home buyers from the population at large. For example, a lot of YouTube pundits, these familiar faces, argue that home prices simply must go down because they're out of line with median incomes. Well, guess what? Home buyers make more than the median income. Zillow found that in 2021, the median home buyer income was $86,000, while the national median income was $65,700. The median American home buyer has 30% more income than the median American. And homeowners are doing even better than new home buyers. According to the Federal Reserve, the median US household net worth in 2019 was $121,700. Here's what's staggering. The median homeowner household had a net worth of $255,000, while the median renter household had a net worth of just $6,300. So when you think about how the larger economy is going to affect homeowners and the current pool of home buyers, you have to appreciate that these two groups generally have a lot more wealth than the median American. And lastly, these graphs all but assure that housing prices are not going to crash like they did in 2008. 2008 was a doom cycle triggered by an overleveraged market. This time around, homeowners have enough equity in their homes to absorb a correction without a doom cycle starting. That's right, I said it again, correction. We are in a correction and markets that saw the most growth during the pandemic, like Boise and Austin, are obviously going to see the sharpest corrections. Markets that weren't pandemic hotspots are probably going to see positive appreciation this year, next year, and potentially for years to come. Nationally, and we have to talk nationally if we're going to discuss the idea of a crash, we're not going to see anything close to the price declines we saw during the Great Recession. So how do you proceed as a home buyer given the uncertainty, the volatility, the unpredictability of this current correction? I have the answer for you. It's a little out there, a little unconventional, but I, I did it myself and I'll tell you, it's the best financial decision I ever made. Are you ready? Buy a duplex instead of a regular house or condo. I know it sounds weird, but buying a home that also generates rental income will insulate you against the market fluctuations we're going to see the next few years, while also putting you in a better position to buy your forever home down the line. If you're curious to learn more, check out this video about why buying a duplex makes so much sense, or this video about how to figure out the numbers when shopping duplexes and subscribe for more videos about how to make the most out of your next home purchase.